Hey there, fellow scientists. It's Pam the paleontologist again. Last time I was here, I gave you a whirlwind tour of the history of life on Earth, right up through the time of the Dimetrodons, the first giant reptiles that had big sails on their backs. The time the Dimetrodons lived was followed by a time known as the Age of Reptiles. This era, according to some scientists, began approximately 245 million years ago. This is a very, very long time ago, long before humans existed. Dinosaurs and humans never lived on the Earth together. This is the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-Rex as some people call it. It was one of the largest and most fearsome predators ever to walk the Earth. A predator is an animal that eats other animals. We can tell by its teeth that the T-Rex was a meat eater. We also know that it was over 40 feet long and up to 20 feet tall. Judging by the size of its bones, it weighed about 7 tons, or more than two average-sized cars combined. How are these two dinosaurs alike, and how are they different? This painting shows T-Rex facing off against a Triceratops, a dinosaur with long horns and a shield-like plate on its head. Here, the word plate means a flat, hard piece that covers the bodies of some animals. Keep in mind when you look at artwork like this that nobody today really knows what dinosaurs looked like. We have only seen their bones. Artists use information supplied by scientists today to try to make good guesses about what dinosaurs looked like when they were alive. Scientists do all this based on dinosaur bones. Many people think of dinosaurs as giant reptiles, and in fact, the word dinosaur means terrifying lizard. However, many paleontologists now believe that dinosaurs are more closely related to birds than they are to lizards. Whatever the case may be, there are no dinosaurs on Earth anymore. They have all been extinct, dead and gone, for many, many years. Now there are just fossilized bones of dinosaurs buried in the Earth's crust. Here is my personal favorite, the Stegosaurus. Like the Triceratops, the Stegosaurus was an herbivore or plant eater, but it had some pretty good ways of defending itself against meat eaters. Stegosaurus had hard, sharp plates on its back, which would have made it difficult to bite. But just in case anyone tried, the Stegosaurus also had a spiky tail that could really do some damage. How do we find and learn about these incredible animals? Some scientists believe that dinosaurs ruled the Earth for more than 100 million years, and their fossilized bones can be found in many parts of the world, including the United States. If something is fossilized, that means over a long period of time it came to be like a fossil. Dinosaur fossils are hard to find, and excavating or digging up their bones is not as easy as you might think. Once paleontologists find an area that is likely to have dinosaur bones, we move in with our tools and begin careful excavation. Paleontologists must use sharp little knives and small brushes to gradually scrape away the sedimentary rocks surrounding the fossils. It will take this paleontologist days and maybe even weeks to excavate this one bone. It's slow work, but to me there is nothing more exciting in the world than carefully uncovering a bone that may have been buried in a rock for 100 million years. Here, a paleontologist is excavating a large collection of bones from the sandstone cliffs of Dinosaur National Monument, an area located in the states of Colorado and Utah, 
where we have uncovered hundreds and thousands of dinosaur bones. Can you see all the bones in this picture? That was one big dinosaur. But what did it really look like? It's hard to tell because over time, the bones have moved around and become broken. As a paleontologist, I sometimes feel like I spend half my life putting puzzles together. Often, we only find a few bones. The rest of the skeleton was long since destroyed or perhaps even dragged away by a predator many, many years ago. Other times, lots of different dinosaur bones can be mixed in together. We paleontologists have to use our detective skills to figure out which bones belonged to which type of dinosaur. In fact, these bones belonged to a mighty Camarasaurus. I knew as soon as I saw its head. This plant eater was 60 feet long and weighed about 20 tons. A real whopper! A ton is a unit of weight equal to 2,000 pounds. That means this dinosaur weighed the same amount as 10 cars when it was alive. Here is one artist's idea of what the Camarasaurus looked like. It could use its long tail to fend off predators. Good thing you don't have to worry about these things anymore. Not all dinosaurs were huge. In fact, some were really small. Take the Compsognathus. This little critter stood just two feet tall and scurried around on two little bird-like legs. Two feet is less than the length of one yardstick. Compsognathus was a meat eater that fed on little lizards. We know this because paleontologists found parts of a fossilized lizard in the stomach cavity of a Compsognathus fossil. What happened to the dinosaurs? You can't go and see a live T-Rex today at the zoo because dinosaurs are extinct. Remember, extinct means that there are no more left. Some scientists believe that dinosaurs all died about 65 million years ago. According to fossil records, the extinction of the dinosaurs was quite sudden. Why? That's something paleontologists have been trying to answer ever since the first dinosaur bones were discovered and identified nearly 200 years ago. For years, many scientists believed that extraordinary geologic events, such as supervolcanoes, must have had something to do with it. These days, however, many scientists believe that the dinosaur extinction was caused by a giant meteorite from outer space. A meteorite is a piece of rock that falls from space to the Earth's surface. There are billions of meteors or burning chunks of debris in outer space. Some meteors are quite large, but most are tiny, between the size of a sand grain and a baseball. Meteors are whizzing around all over the place in outer space. Occasionally, a meteor crashes toward Earth. When this happens, the meteor hits the atmosphere at an incredible speed and usually burns up as it enters the uppermost part of Earth's atmosphere. Occasionally, bits and pieces of meteors survive their trip through the atmosphere and actually fall to Earth. This is very rare, but it does happen from time to time, and it is possible to find pieces of them on the ground. When part of a meteor survives the trip through the atmosphere and lands on Earth, the meteor becomes a meteorite, or space rock, that has landed on Earth. Now, let's go back to dinosaur extinction. Some scientists think that the dinosaur extinction was caused by a giant meteorite from outer space. When the meteorite struck the Earth, it sent massive plumes or clouds of debris up into the atmosphere. That means it sent large amounts of bits and pieces of objects from the Earth up into the atmosphere, like dirt, dust, and other things. 
This debris would have blocked out the light and energy of the sun, causing much of the Earth's plant life to die and severely lowering the temperature. Most creatures at the time would have been unable to adapt, and they would have died out before the skies had a chance to clear.